All right, let's talk George Carl Loftus, who I was a big fan of coming out of college, and I think he's played solid here in the preseason. He hasn't been winning super consistently, but he has still been getting wins. And at the end of the day, you want to see guys be able to get wins at the NFL level. If you can get wins, you start to feel better about them. So on this play, you see where he is on the field. It's a little bit tough to... I was trying to figure out how to display on the screen that he's going up against a left tackle. I figured I'll just tell you he's going up against a left tackle one-on-one -on -one just because there's kind of a few guys uh, there. It's hard to make the circle only get the left tackle there. So uh, in case you're wondering why I just circled the edge rusher and not who he's going up against. But that's where he is on the field. It is going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And these are the things you want to see a rookie do, right? You want to see a rookie be able to win one-on-one -on -one matchups. If you can win one-on-one -on -one matchups, that can set up other things, right? When this play begins. Begins, you right as of here, you notice what he's doing. He puts his left arm kind of on that uh, left tackle's right side of his body. And what do we typically talk about? If it's a left tackle, typically that left hand is going to be the key thing here. If you can knock that left hand away, well, then you can be in a pretty good position. But that's not the only way that you can win. Now, for 70, for Chicago, it definitely seemed like that's what he's prepared for. He's in much more of a, okay, do not let him get his left, you know, not, do not let him get my left hand away. As long as I have that, I'm okay. But Carl Loftus, who has his own left hand on the tackle's right side of his body, he says, hey, I'm pretty strong. I have a hand on his body. Let's just try to push him back and watch how he does that. He just gets that burst right away to the point where, you know, doesn't matter what side you go through right now, you're a foot away from Justin Fields, which is the goal, and now he can try sort of an inside move. As you see, he does that inside move and is able to just, you know, a second too late get to Justin Fields. So that kind of stuff, that's what Carl Loftus can do. He has power and he has great hands and great technique. And these are the things that we saw him do in college. And we're definitely seeing him get some of those wins at the NFL level. It's part of how he has two sacks now in, you know, a small sample size and basically one uh, NFL game length. Watch, here is the first one where it's going to be a third and 11. And, you know, these types of situations always going to make it easier to get sacks, right? A third and 11 because the quarterback going to hold on to the ball for a little bit longer than it probably should if nothing gets open. And this can be a great situation for edge rushers to get those sacks. Right when this play begins, I mean, you look at the hand placement. I mean, he just has the hand placement he wants. He grabbed it uh, his hands uh, got both of them right onto the left tackles, you know, uh, shoulder area, not, not really shoulder area, more of the, you know, the front side of their chest. So at this point for Carl Loftus, again, using his hands, he's going to be able to win right here. He gets his right hand over, is able to get forward, and eventually is going to get to the quarterback for a sack right there. Uh, you know, he generated a pressure, quarterback held onto the ball for an ill-advised time, which allowed for the sack to happen. But that's just sort of a great example, I think, of, you know, Carl Loftus's technique and how he can beat NFL offensive linemen using this kind of technique and these are the kind of ways that you can be successful because kind of the thought with Carl Loftus is okay you know definitely got a lot of wins in college has great technique but the issue is eh, he's not necessarily the athlete some of these other guys are and and I don't I'm not going to completely sit here and say I hate that argument because I do think that athleticism you know there is definitely value in that of course but I also think that there's value in just getting a guy who knows how to win. And Carl Loftus is the guy who knows how to get wins. A play like this I thought was fun. Where this is going to be a very similar play to if you watched the Kayvon Thibodeau injury. Where this is essentially the exact same play. And a lot of people were calling that, you know, that block dirty. Well, it's actually a pretty common block uh, in the NFL. You see it happen all the time. And a good edge rusher, or at least an aware edge rusher, knows how to get away with it. I'll get how to get around it, I would say. Seems like Thibodeau thought something else was going on. I don't blame Thibodeau for the injury, just an unfortunate play, I think. A play that I wouldn't actually hate uh, if it got was getting got rid of also. But basically watch how right when this play begins, the tight end is flashing over and then he's going to sort of cut Carl Loftus. So kind of going at his legs, causing Carl Loftus to fall over him. That's how you make your block. That's how you want this to work. But there are ways around this. Watch Carl Loftus be able to dodge that play and wasn't able to make the tackle or anything like that because the run was to the other side of the field. But it's just kind of a good example of showing he has sort of the technique to avoid this kind of stuff. That's a technique play at the end of the day. And it was a good one from Carl Loftus. So just bringing that one up as kind of a, you know, a way that he can sort of do a good job at 
uh, you know, getting around these types of plays. We also had this play where what's going to happen on this one is you see where he is on the field and it's going to be kind of an interesting situation where he's actually going to start off going up against a tight end, but the tackle will still get over and try to block him. Like watch how right when this play begins, he's going up against a tight end, but I think attacks that tight end well. So the tackle who's now trying to block Carl Loftus you know, in a bit of a desperate situation, trying to get over there, trying to find a way to then block Karloftis so Karloftis does not get to his quarterback here. So he does that and does take Karloftis away, but look at Karloftis just stays fighting and ends up getting over and once assumed that that was taken care of and didn't have to worry about it, well, it was not because Karloftis just continued to fight right there. So kind of a weird play to get a sack. Again, not a traditional type play, but we have seen him win in more traditional type ways, and now we're seeing him, you know, do stuff like that, which, listen, there still is value in that. Okay, do I prefer when someone just straight up beats a tackle? Of course, yeah, you obviously prefer that, because that happens, you're in more of those situations, but these situations still do come up, and you want to have a guy who's good at them. So yeah, what have we learned from Carl Loftus? I mean, as a whole, we haven't learned like a ton. Three pressures and two sacks. And again, the snaps would be roughly one regular season game, a little bit less than one regular season game. Those are very good numbers. If you get two sacks a game, you're the best player to ever play football. So that would obviously be uh, great. But, you know, uh, maybe there still could be more consistency. I think that's fair to say, given one of the sacks was kind of a more of a fluky play, and he only has one pressure that didn't result in a sack uh, in that situation. So you can make the argument, but at the end of the day, it's preseason. It's not the regular season, and it's such a small sample size that saying, oh, I want a little bit more consistency feels silly. The main things that we can do with preseason is to really watch, and I think the main thing, main takeaway I tend to have with preseason is, well, what works? What do we know is working at the NFL level? The fact that we saw some of his technique moves work and work very effectively at the NFL level gets me, ex I think, really excited, actually, for what we could see from uh, for Carl Loftus, just given the fact that if he's winning with these technique moves uh, now, that might mean that he can win with them later, and if he's winning with them later, that's kind of the whole thing with Carl Loftus, is that he is so good at those technique moves, and he won so much in college that if he's going to win with those at the NFL level, he's probably going to win consistently with those at the NFL level, and I think that's where the excitement can get in if you are a Kansas City Chiefs fan. So, yeah, still a big fan of George Carl Loftus. We haven't learned a ton, but we've learned, you know, the technique moves can still work at the NFL level, which, let's be honest, we all kind of thought they would be able to work anyway, so at least that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.